Hello and welcome to our final video lesson on Chapter 16, Photosynthesis, in which we'll be considering the storage of carbohydrates in plants. The three carbon sugars that are produced by the Calvin cycle, which we remember is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, are converted to either sucrose or starch. Let's look first at starch production. We'll take two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and convert that to glucose 6-phosphate in a process similar to gluconeogenesis. Then the phosphate is moved from the number 6 carbon to the number 1 carbon to form glucose 1-phosphate. At the bottom of the slide we start with glucose 1-phosphate and we're going to activate the sugar by A and P transfer. This lo should look very similar to the activation of glucose to form glycogen in mammals, except in this case our donor molecule is ATP. AMP is transferred from ATP to that number one position of glucose to form ADP glucose with the release of inorganic pyrophosphate. As indicated by the double arrows, it's readily reversible. However, when we hydrolyze that last phosphoanhydride bond of inorganic pyrophosphate, we release more energy and that makes the process overall irreversible. Now that we have our substrate ADP glucose, starch synthase enzyme transfers that glucose to the end of the starch polymer in a process very similar to glycogen synthase and we release ADP in the process. So this is how plants form starch. Another form of carbohydrates in plants is sucrose. We again start with a 3 carbon sugar and convert that to 6 carbon sugars, except in this case it's UDP glucose and fructose 6-phosphate. These two molecules are then easily condensed to form sucrose 6-phosphate with, with the release of UDP and then this is converted to, to sucrose by hydrolysis of that phosphate at the number 6 position. Sucrose is the form in which the sugar is transported to other cells within the plant. It's the transport form of carbon in plants. And that's because the linkage is very stable. We have different sugars and different linkages than those that are recognized by amylases and hydrolases. So it's less subject to hydrolysis and therefore more stable. That concludes our studies of Chapter 16. In our next video lesson, we'll start Chapter 17 with an overview of fatty acid metabolism, and we'll look also at some of the diseases of lipid metabolism.